this video, we are going to be showing you the best passing plays in Madden, pretty much every single Madden. These are kind of blueprints or, or frameworks that you can look at offense and say, these are ways to attack the whole field every single year. And so the first concept we're going to be taking a look at is a standard flood concept. We're going to be explaining how this works in Madden, as well as a, one key thing that you need to know when calling this, if you're calling this from any kind of compression set. So we're in the Jets playbook today. I've got a full ebook on this in my Patreon, patreon.com slash Cody Bauer. Links in the description. You get access to all of the offensive and defensive ebooks for just 10 bucks by being a member. So if you want to sign up, links down below. We're taking a look at Z Spot and Bunch, but really you're just calling any play that has a corner route to do this. And essentially what we're trying to do with the play flood is we're trying to flood the sideline with receiving threats and we're trying to essentially high-low the sideline defender. So as you can see here, I'm in a, a compressed set to the right side of the screen. So if I'm in a compressed set to the right side of the screen, what Madden does is it bases their zones off of a grid-based system. What that means is if your clear-out streak for your flood concept, if he is inside of the numbers, as you can see he is here on the right side, then these deep corner routes are going to run themselves into coverage and they are not going to clear out properly. So what you're going to see is just because I have my bunch here to the wide side and I'm doing this, you're going to see that this corner route to the right is going to actually go ahead and get played by that outside quarter defender. So what you're going to want to do is when you run the play flood or when you're running a flood concept, you ideally, if you're in a compressed formation, if you just run this concept here to the short side of the field, which as you can see, now I'm to the short side of the field, where is my clear out streak? As you can see, he's basically right on the numbers. So now he is going to influence that outside quarter a little bit more, and we're going to be able to throw that ball kind of underneath of that defender. Now, if you wanted to really make sure that it happened, you could also put that clear out on a fade, which will take him one step to that grid. It'll take him one step outside, which will get him outside the numbers. And now that outside quarter is very much so influenced by that receiving threat. You can get to this, especially if you're in a bunch formation, a lot of different ways. For example, we could run it kind of like this. I think one of the more underrated ways to run flood actually uh, is this version of it. And the reason why is just because the slot receiver will clear out a lot cleaner and your tight end will come underneath it a lot better and just kind of avoid the KOs in general. Now, let's say that you wanted to run this same exact concept, but you are on the wide side of the field. You just happen to be. What you can do from compression is you can go ahead and motion that streak outside. So by motioning the streak outside, as you can see, it's going, to, it's going to put him on the numbers. So now that outside quarter is going to get cleared out, and the spacing is going to be pretty good, and then you're able to throw that. Now, I would want to wait a little bit longer than I did right there to make sure that I can avoid the KOs. That's something that's a little bit more specific to this Madden, but in general, you know, you want to try to avoid defenders as best possible. So we're going to free form it and really get that bend on the ball to the sideline. So as you can see, that's the flood concept. It's just a streak, a corner, and a flat route. And if you are in a compressed set, you need to make sure that you're either running this to the short side of the field or you're going to go ahead and you're going to motion somebody. Now, let's say that you are in a spread out formation and you want to do the same basic concept. What you want to do is when you're in a spread formation, as you can see here, you know, this is going to be very easy. All we're going to do is we're going to put the tie down a corner and we're going to streak. And now we have the flood concept, right? We have streak, corner, flat. And what you'll see here is your corner route will have a nice clean clear out and be able to attack the sideline. That is, that is the flood concept in a nutshell. The next concept that we're going to be taking a look at today as far as kind of our fundamental Madden concepts that really work every single year is what I call cross. And cross the cross concept is super effective. And basically what we're trying to do with the cross concept is we're trying to create a high-low across the field, across the – across the we want the receivers to run across the field. So the way we're going to do this is through – 
using a crosser, a slot crosser. So if you don't have a slot crosser or slot apprentice, then you can just find a play with a crossing route. So as you see here, PA crossers from trips has this. The setup for this is we're going to flat the middle trips receiver. We're going to in route the outside trips receiver. And if you want to, you can smart route him or you can let him go a little shallower and create a little better high low over the middle. And then we're going to streak the tight end and we're going to block our running backs. You see this, is what it looks like. So our tight end is really a clear out route. And so our first read is really this quick flat in concept, which is super good. You can, if they, if they don't play hard flats over there on the left side, a lot of times that flat route will be open. So you see how he kind of like is getting suctioned inside. A lot of times that happens. So the other element of this is, okay, so now they have to do that adjustment. Well, when they do that adjustment, then what you're going to see is now your in route is going to get open super quick. So there's a lot of adjusting that they have to do over there to kind of just even stop that element of the play. But really the best element of the play is that this tight end is going to clear out some space, some zones, and you can throw this on the sideline, kind of catch it right in that little window right there. Now, in this example, because our tight end, again, is our clear out route is not outside the numbers, an outside quarter will play it. So one way to manipulate that is to just get the tight end a little bit more outside. And now what you'll see is this outside quarter, you know, is really never going to play the crossing route. Now, you can do this from other formations as well. But the other, you know, beauty of this is, okay, so now, you know, the tight end is going to get basically pull the user out of the middle. And so the user is now going to go guard the tight end. They're having to do a lot of stuff to adjust to stop this, you know, and then we just check it down, you know, to our little in route kind of coming over the middle of the field. So the first, you know, that was the flood concept. And then this is kind of the, the cross concept. Now, like I said, the cross concept can apply. There's other methods to kind of get to the cross concept. Let's say if you were in a different formation, one of the best, in my opinion, is this play out of the bunch called Smash Return. And it's a really, it's a, it's a really nice cross concept. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to slot apprentice post this guy, drag your tight in, and then you're going to block your running back. So now we have all three receivers on the right essentially crossing and flooding to the left, but they're going to do so in a way that creates a high-low read on the left where we have our drag as kind of our underneath route. We have our post as our kind of over top or crossing route. And then we have our backside return route as kind of our backside in route. So you see here, okay, they didn't go use of the post. I'm going to throw the post. And then if they do decide, okay, I'm going to go cover the post with my user, just like they would decide, okay, I'm going to go cover the post with my crosser that we just showed you out of trips tied in, then what you're going to be able to do is oftentimes you're going to be able to hit that little return route right in the middle of the field. The next play that we're going to be taking a look at is known as the six or seam concept, the seam read. And what this concept is designed to do is it's designed to attack the seam area of the field or the vertical hook area of the defense. And there's a couple different ways in which we can do that and accomplish that. So the first way is to use kind of seam wheels uh, like, like what you find in Gun Bunch, for example, out of the play verticals. What you're looking for here is we're really trying to attack the, the space between the numbers and the hash marks. So as you see, this tight end on the right is going to attack that space well. So what is this? Why would we do this, guys? Why would we do this? The reason we would do something like this is if they were trying to do kind of a, a Mabel coverage here on the right side, and then their user was kind of playing more heavy middle of the field. What this is going to do is then your seam area becomes completely open and vacated when you start dropping all these sideline zones. This is also a really good way to manipulate a heavy pressure. The reason this is good for heavy pressure is a lot of blitzes are going to basically be essentially versions of what you see here on your screen. So as you can see, um, with the user in the middle, they might go user that tight end route, but we have the running back on this little streak. And again, what you're going to see is that seam area of the field is able to be manipulated. 
Now, another really important read on verticals that not a lot of people talk about, uh, but is very, very important to be able to make is really the deep vertical crosser. And the reason this is really good is because if the user decides that he's going to go guard that tight end, then the middle of the field gets vacated and you can throw this kind of right in there and possess, you would want a possession, catch that and kind of drop to your, to your feet and catch the ball. So those are another way, but in general, it's this idea that we are going to attack the seam area of the field. In Madden 24, one of the new ways that we can also accomplish this is through the use of a running back streak and then basically on the, on the bunch side. So you see here, we have the running back streak and then we have the kind of outside wheel and then we also have that crosser. So again, same basic scenario, right? But let's say, okay, they play the running back. Look where we can throw this crosser in that deeper seam area of the field. And then the tight end is attacking kind of that underneath seam area of the field. Now, another way that we can accomplish this is through the use of slot streaks. So slot streaks are really good specifically against cover three, okay? And the reason they're really good against cover three, as you can see right here, is there's a lot of space in that deep seam area on both sides of the field. So we're gonna use slot streaks and then what I like to do is either A, motion this wheel route outside, or if I can't do that, I'll either put him on a corner route, right? We could do something like this and be able to attack the seams really well. So as you can see here, there's a lot of space that I can fit that slot streak into that window in that seam area of the field. Now you can do the same exact thing through the use of seam streaks that we're about to show you. So seam streaks are really good, and these come from plays like the play verticals and trips tight end. So what this is going to do is we are, again, going to attack the seam area of the field. Now, again, the crossing route is really important. The crossing route, when it cuts to the inside, is going to be in that same spot where the right side seam streak would be, okay? So what you can do is you could streak the tight end to attack that space. 100% could do that. That's completely fine. Um, and then you could even do something like this. And now you're kind of getting to all four of the seam areas. But the beauty here is that this slot streak to the triangle receiver is going to get open in the seam area on the left. The same thing is true on the right side. Let's say they shade their cover four down and maybe they're usering here and they see your running back run underneath and they're going to go guard him. So if they were to do something like that where they go underneath, then when this guy cuts, it's going to open up, as you see on the right side, it's going to open up that tight end. So let me explain that one more time here. We're running cover four, and I'll show it against cover three too because I think it's important to show both. But against cover four here, if you watch this tight end corner, Late, he's going to be wide open to that sideline due to the fact that the crosser has to get played. What a, another method we can do is we can use, use this cover three, right? So if they are using a cover three coverage, it's a little easier to hit in the seams, and they're going to have to drop this guy into a zone here, right, which means then this, this defender uh, is going to have to be more of a yellow to the left. And so you kind of see where we're getting with our coverage. And what this does by attacking the seam area of the field is now the circle receiver right in that little window right there is going to get open. Now, again, depending on the zones, depending on the adjustments, obviously the corner route is a lot more open than that right side seam because I have a yellow zone in the right side seam. So, you know, kind of keep that in your, in your mind. But let's say, for example, that they did um, – trying to think what I would do with this guy because he would be basically down in here you know I mean it could be a couple different things but essentially if he bails back to the seam area your running back will be wide open that's one point to make but another point to make is how would they stop this uh, route combo here they would take this defender and put him on a half right and then they would have this guy on a cloud and then this guy could be maybe on a vert hook but generally, he's probably going to be on a hard flat, something like this, a roll coverage. Again, a roll coverage, because there's no yellow zone in the middle, 
Now there's a lot more opening here you'll see if we hit this route kind of over the middle before that D path is able to jump on it, okay? So in general, that's the seams idea. There's, there's other ways to get to it. I think this right here is a really good method. Uh, another reason why seams are really good for splitting cover two. So if people are running double Mabel coverage on you, this is a really good play because that cover two will get split by the seam throw. And you see here that the triangle receiver has a really good chance to be able to basically get open for a touchdown. And again, like I said, there's, there's multiple ways to do this. We could get to the seam concept with something as simple as this setup uh, right here, which I think is really good. It's basically, we're gonna flat triangle and we're gonna use him as a motion over. So we're attacking the seam on the right with the running back, the seam on the left with the seam streak. And then we have kind of that tight end breaking across late as kind of something to hold their user underneath. Right, so that's the seams concept. Couple different ways in which we can we can get to it. The next concept we're going to be taking a look at is really good for beating man coverage, zone coverage, and it is the shallow cross concept. Super effective play. Um, it's also known in Madden as slant post. And basically, what you want to do is you want to have a post and a shallow route. Really, really effective for beating man and zone coverage. So what we're going to do here is we are going to post our tight end, we're going to flat or zig our slot, and then you can either leave this super deep post or you can put him on a streak. And really what this is, is we're just high-lowing here to the, to the right side. So we're really reading that right side to see how they react to the tight end post. If they run with the post, which oftentimes the user will run with the post, if the user does that, then we want to go ahead and we want to hit that little cross right in that little window right there. If it's man coverage, he'll often be significantly more open than that. He'll run himself open. If the user decides, oh, I want to go ahead and sit down on the, on the drag route, then we want to wait for our tight end to cross the formation and hit him really on that left side sideline. This is also why you want to make sure, again, and we talked about this with the sale concept, you want your clear out to be basically outside the numbers so that it can be most effective. So in bunch tight end, for example, we'll just want to fade that guy and we want to run this with our bunch to the short side. Now you see that quarter gets really pulled back and it really opens up that, that, left, side, uh, that left side post. Now, again, I said this was really good against man to man, right? It's really good against man to man. It's also really good against man to man pressure. So if they're going to blitz you in man coverage, this is a really, really good route combo. Why? Well, because your zig is going to beat man. Your tight end post is going to beat man. Your drag is going to beat man. Literally every route, pretty much, is going to beat man. It's just a matter of if you get time or not. Now, you can also add in other little elements, such as in the example of bunch tight end, you can run something like this as you can see there's really nobody guarding the running back so my first read now is i've got my running back as a hot read here to the right side if nobody goes and guards him i can just dump the ball right off to him quick and be able to attack the defense that way my running back basically becomes my clear out streak right if i was in a two by two set i would want to run a combo i would want the combo to look more like so well this is a way to get to that from this alignment by just simply putting the running back on a wheel. The other really underrated part of putting a running back on a wheel in, let's say it's a zone look, is wheel routes oftentimes will pull these curl flats super back, and then you can throw your shallow underneath of the zones after the wheel route pulls them back. So now they have to do what? They have to hard flat. What's the problem with hard flatting? The problem with hard flatting is now your tight end becomes significantly more open over here to the left side of the screen. So that is the slant post concept. It's super effective. It beats man. It beats zone every single year. It's one of my favorite passing concepts in the entire game. Now, the last concept we're going to be taking a look at today, guys, is the stick concept. There's a lot of ways to get to this, but it's essentially a basic triangle read that we're trying to accomplish. Again, there's a lot of different methods in which we can get to the same basic idea, 
Uh, but what we're going to show you uh, here is just a very basic kind of stick style uh, of concept. And you can do it from almost anything. And essentially, we're just trying to create a triangle in the middle of the field. So one of the best ways to do this is to utilize a out route, a wheel route. And the reason this is really good is that wheel route will pull a lot of different zones. And then on the right side here, we're going to go with a flat, a hitch, and a post route. As you can see, this is a simple setup and very good. It's a great stick little concept. Again, we're just trying to create that triangle in the middle of the field and manipulate that hook curl defender. Another way that we can get at this, a little bit more of a unique way, would be to do something like what you see on your screen here. The reason this is good is because you have two hitches now, so those yellows are really getting manipulated. And as you can see, one of those hitches is almost always going to be open and available to you. What I like about this specific concept is another way you could run it would be to do it like this, as you can see. And then on this left-hand side, we can run just some kind of simple ghost, ghost route. Uh, and the beauty of this is just the spacing. It creates much more space, and so that post has a lot more space to be able to work over the entire middle of the field. Uh, another way that you can get to the same basic thing would be to utilize a running back, uh, basically kind of like our verticals, but it would be to utilize running back streak and then something like this. This is another method of kind of getting to the same type of triangle that we're creating in the middle of the field. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention that you can do uh, that is really interesting, uh, it's kind of a newer way kind of a newer way of creating, you know, basically the stick concept is just through utilizing uh, trail routes, actually. So a way that you could do this from bunch tight in or from bunch strong would be to utilize a trail route like this. And essentially your trail route is going to be your post. So as you see here, you have that little triangle and then you can just check down to, you know, your trail route or, or whatever you want to do. So, so many different ways in which we can create this. It also, you know, you could do it where, like, like for example, whoops, I didn't mean to do that, sorry. For example, we could also do the same basic thing, uh, but the only difference now being is we're going to utilize a curl instead of a hitch, and then we're going to utilize, you know, a C route as, a, as our streak pull, because if you watch how this works, the C route does still pull that quarter, and then this is going to come underneath it, as you can see. So I know it looks a little sloppy, but it's the same method. Now, let me show you the same basic idea. I just want to show it to you from one other formation real quick so that you can kind of see how this cross applies to other things that you can do. So we'll just apply this to trips tight in. And again, the main purpose of stick is either to beat the blitz or just beat double Mabel in general. So it could be something as simple as... Uh, this right here very simple here and you see you have kind of those little pockets that you can hit these little underneath check downs and then you have that middle of the field read that should hold the user in the middle of the field because if it doesn't uh, hold the user in the middle of the field then the user will have to you, you see here it's like see how see how the hook curls are are really held in the middle so the user then has to commit to to going to one of them so for example Let's say, you know, they do a man up, a man up there, they drop this guy in a cloud, they man, and they're going to use the running back, right? Let's say they do all those adjustments, which are really good adjustments for trip side in, 100%. But the problem is, look what happens. It leaves this middle of the field wide open for your post to be able to manipulate it. So that's what stick is. It's just creating um, a spaced out triangle in the middle of the field to be able to attack a multitude of coverages. So those are some of the best route combinations in Madden 24. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure you leave a like down below. And if you want to take your Madden game to the next level, make sure you jump in the Patreon. It's only $10, and I guarantee you it's going to make your game a thousand times better. Um, it ju I just think that it's literally that gives you the knowledge you need uh, to be as good as you can. So 10 bucks goes a long way in improving your Madden game. If you want to sign up, head down to the description and click the link down below.